podcasting. What's the craze with podcasts? You're listening to the player development podcast right now. So you enjoy podcasts, but have you ever thought of creating one? Have you ever thought about the benefits of a podcast? Well, I was at that stage and today's guest, Jonathan Jones, helped me to where we are now, the player development pod. And I'm so excited to have him come on and talk about podcasts, the benefits of podcasting and how he can help you create a podcast. I believe podcasts, personally, I believe this would definitely help student athletes in this NIL age opportunity for them to speak their voice, talk, talk about their perspective. I think podcasting is the way to go. As stated earlier, Jonathan has helped me in this podcasting game and has helped me set up the podcast that I have now, the one that you're listening to. Here is our conversation. Player Development Pie family, how are y'all? How are y'all? Today we continue the series, Why I Love Player Development. Now, if, you're first, if this is your first time listening to it, the reason why I love player development are the people who help those in the role. And today, today we have my guy, Jonathan Jones from Jonathan Jones Speaks. And this is special to me because honestly, without Jonathan Jones, the podcast you're listening to right now, be it your car, be it your house, maybe you're watching YouTube, maybe you're working out, whatever. If it's not for me going through the school of podcasting by Jonathan Jones, this podcast would not be here. And I'm just so thankful for him, uh, for what he's done for us, right? For our community. And and now we, we got a conference off of this. Like it's, it's so much, but I'm so thankful and appreciative of Jonathan making time for the player development pod. So let's all give him a round of applause. All right. John. <laughs> and he puts up with me in our weekly calls. Hey, Jonathan, if you could introduce yourself uh, to the people of the player development pod. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, uh, player development potties? Um, so <laughs> I'm, so I mean, I just boil myself down more so as as a teacher, right? I'm a I'm a podcaster. I'm a speaker, and you know it takes different forms at times. But man, all in all, I'm I'm a teacher. I love to learn information. And I learn that I love to educate others uh, with that same information and through my own experience. So that that would be me, and that's. Um, a little bit about what I do. And also I'll say I'm, I'm the host of uh, beyond the ball with Jonathan Jones. That's my podcast platform. Let's go. Let's go. Now, you know, let's talk about this, right? Before we get into the questions I have, you know, these questions I ask you and I, this happens every time I interview somebody, I'm like, let me ask this question before this question. <laughs> but, you know, I do have a question. I'm going to save it for the end. I'm not going to give it all away. Um, podcasting. Mm -hmm. Why? Why, why do and, I podcast or why should others? I'm going to say why should others for okay. later because I don't want to give too much sauce. But okay. what was your your first introduction to podcast? Let's go with that. Let's go with that. So my first introduction to podcasting was me being interviewed, right? I was interviewed a couple of times. And then uh, I'll never forget my, my guy, Dennis. So I sat down with him. He met me at Starbucks. It was a napkin. It was a pen. And after I told him that I wanted to start a podcast, he began to lay out for me the format of a podcast. Okay, you want to have your intro, you want to get your content, you want to do your outro. So this right. was my introduction to podcasting, which was, which then led to my first podcast that I started, which is called Speak Your Success. Because the goal for me was helping the millennial generation speak their success, believe in their greatness, and create the life and business of their dreams, right? So by doing that, the goal for me was to build my brand awareness and to get more speaking engagements. So that's where it started. And that was like 2016, mm -hmm. somewhere like, somewhere like that. And 275 episodes later, then I ended up uh, throwing that episode. I ended up throwing that podcast actually not away, but we'll just say, put, put that podcast on, on an indefinite injury reserve. But um, gotcha. yeah, man, that's, that's where it started for me. Nice. I appreciate you sharing it. Now, this wasn't in, this wasn't in the questions, but Speak Your Success was not only a podcast, it was also a book. So talk about this. Was it the podcast first, then it was a book? How did the book come about? Yeah. So, okay. So we, we, we did uh, Speak Your Success. Well, no, no. So the book actually came first and the book, I, uh, okay, wait, 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 let me slow down. Let me slow down. So first... 
I wrote the book and the book was entitled process 14 surprisingly simple behaviors to skyrocket millennials to success. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this book because my dad, Dr. Fred Jones, shout out to him. He always told me you need to be positioned to where you can get paid nine ninety seven an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the reason he told me that was the way we broke down the book. So if you read the book, and I know, I know you got a copy, Coach Ed Jones, Absolutely. in the book, I break down different principles, right? Be successful, be determined, uh, be on time, be a role model. There's 14 of them. And mm -hmm. it's set up in the way to where if somebody was to book me to speak at that time, or even now, they can say, John, we want you to come out and speak. Then I can say, well, what do you want me to cover? And I can lay out all the chapters of my book and say, well, you know, take your pick. Like, what do you want? So that was the starting point. And then my first podcast, which was named Jonathan Jones Speaks, uh, the podcast, which I changed the name to Speak Your Success. Gotcha. Then was like uh, additional education, right? Because we had the book and then I was like, well, I want to bring and increase my brand awareness. And I was talking to my videographer at the time, Reginald Titus, shout out to him because we were on big on Gary V at the time. And Gary mm -hmm. V was saying, you need to do a podcast, you need to document your journey, document your journey. So right. that was when the podcast got started. And that's, you know, the whole process, no, no pun intended. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for sharing that. Now, can you give us a little bit for those? Cause I, and let me say this. All that will be in the show notes. You all, you know, I'm going to throw it in the show notes, jump in the show notes to see everything, but we're going to talk about your podcast beyond the ball. Now I was actually a guest on that back in, Ooh, man, it's like four years, 20. Yeah. Before COVID 2019. Yeah. 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 Wow. Man. <laughs> Time flies. Wow. Wow. I was probably a lot uh, slimmer than this, but anyway, um, if you could talk about <laughs> your podcast beyond the ball. Yeah. So the reason why beyond the ball was started. So we're going to pick right up from where I put uh, speaker success on injury reserve. Okay. So I'm getting burnt out 275 mm -hmm. episodes, coach Ed Jones, 275 awesome. episodes. I was putting in the work. I was going That's Monday, cool. Wednesday, Friday. And then I got to the point where I was like, this, this podcast isn't doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. It, it wasn't helping me. It, it was helping me build brand awareness, but it wasn't helping me generate more speaking engagements because I wasn't clear when I started out. And that's yeah. where a lot of people get this thing wrong. And I'm going I'm to continue with answering your question, but oh, you I see a lot of student athletes. I see a lot of NFL athletes, different people as a whole. They're like, I'm going to start this podcast thing. Everybody's saying, start the podcast. Everybody just hopping on anchor. But then what happens after about maybe five episodes, if they make it that far, they realize that there was more to it than what was advertised. Right. right. So for me, I, I realized the work that was required, but I didn't realize the purpose that I wanted to lay out for the podcast. So mm -hmm. I put speaker success on the back shelf. Then I'm sitting here in the pandemic. And this was right around the time where coach Ed Jones, I'm working in this seasoning factory. I'm moving mm -hmm. seasonings. I'm coming home smelling like paprika, garlic, <laughs> salt, like all this stuff, man. I even got, I still got the pictures, but I was like, I want to, I want to work with student athletes. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I sat there and I was like, well, what would be the best way for me to get my introduction to working with student athletes? Because I've spoken with student athletic programs before, but mm -hmm. then I started thinking, and, and this is, this is just a, a challenge to everybody out there. If you're at a spot in your life to where you're like, I want to do something and this is what I want to do. I would challenge you to assess your experiences because whatever you've done up until this point, those experiences you can still use to get you to where you want to go. So I looked at my experiences and I'm like, I was a former collegiate athlete. Mm -hmm. I was a part of a junior college national championship team. Let's go. And I'm like, well, let me see how I can start a podcast because now this is a free resource to where I can serve student athletes and the staff that support them. So I started the podcast. Then I had the opportunity to speak. University of all uh, University of Arkansas, then spoke with TCU, then mm -hmm. had the opportunity. Uh, it was University of Arkansas, it was TCU, and then later down the line, we had some other programs trickle in. But it all started with me leveraging my experience and then just telling stories, pulling strategies, 
and just providing that educational resource uh, for the student athletes and the staff that serve and support them. And I, I think you, that's the one of the big things when we communicated, you know, early on, I wanted to do a podcast and, you know, I got a lot of general experiences, but I knew what I wanted to do. And you kept telling me, what, what is your purpose? What is your purpose, Ed Jones? I kept saying, I just want to educate people about player development and move the player development field forward. And I'm so glad we had that conversation because to your point, I could talk about culture. I could talk about recruiting. I could talk about a lot, right? And some of that does fall into player development, but it really took off when I had a purpose. And to also to your point, what really kept wind in my cells when it was get because it's man, look, you, some of y'all listening. I know people, you know, like previously I've heard people, oh, you just podcast, you just get behind the mic, it can't be that. It's hard, man. Like that, who that first man that that first month, I was like, man, because you do all this work, right? And you know, people support you, whatever. But you go back and look at the views. It's sixteen views. You got one like, different things like that, and everything else you put out, right? I could put out a picture of me walking, boom, seventy five likes, and so it's like. You know, you get caught up in that, but what helped me through all that was the purpose. And you know this, and our listeners know this. I've talked about it. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it really helped me because I was going through a tough time where I was told, or I felt like, or I was player development was removed from me. I was removed from the player development position. And it was great for me now on the high, on the backside of it, after we made it to 50 episodes, top five podcasters, let's go. I ain't done 275 yet. I'm not there. But on the backside of it, I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, that helped me through it. Like that purpose, just keeping that purpose. Like I need, I got to educate. I got to show up. Like, and it was because t- it's tough, man. You know, I was like, man, there's some days I'm like, hey, look, if I miss this episode, they ain't nobody going to say nothing. But it was a purpose <laughs> of helping somebody else. Right. Because every single, I kid you not, every single time I did have one of those up to 4 a.m. doing a podcast and then dropping my kids off at seven for school. And I'm just sitting there like, why did I do that? And I would get a random message on LinkedIn from a college student. Thank you so much because this is what I want to do. And it, it all went back to the purpose. If I didn't have my purpose, if I was just on here talking about stuff, I wouldn't have made it this far. So anybody listening, like he said, ex- assess your experiences. So for me, I assess the experiences. And this thing is going to go for a while because all I'm doing is assessing what I did in player development. There's so many wrinkles to it that you just open up you know, these things and create seasons and episodes. Yeah, man, most definitely. And then the and then the beautiful thing about it is just like you're talking about with the with the listens and you know seeing what the engagement might be. The beautiful thing about podcasting, we can almost equate to um, like baseball, right? Because baseball, if a batter goes into the batter's box and they end up hitting three times out of like ten, they'll have like a three hundred batting average. Oh, yeah. With podcasting. If you get three people, we'll we'll say one, right? We'll say you keep putting out episodes and we'll say after 10 episodes, one person hits you up and then one person might say, hey, Coach Ed Jones, man, we're we're trying to figure out this thing with our player development program. We don't know what we're doing, but we want to bring you in because we know that you're the OG of player development. Can you help us? Right. And that right there would would make it worthwhile, not only for you getting the opportunity to to go and help them assess their program, but you're creating, like you always talk about, you're creating generational impact yes, all sir. by imparting wisdom to that coach because then the coach now is going to talk to the other coach and then they're going to talk to their staff and it's going to trickle down through the young men or young women that might be on their team. So now we're changing the game at the highest level all from a podcast, right? So it, it, it's, it's just one of those things to where it, 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 it's easy to see stuff on surface level and to say, oh man, that's not working. This podcast, this thing ain't working. I did this, I did that. None of the stuff is working, but at the end of the day, it is working, but it's just a long tail effect. So you got to keep going. And then, Thank you know, you. it's going to do what it do. Uh, so a lot of the lessons you gave, I, I don't want to give it away because May 20th. Did I say May 20th? Sorry, y'all. March 20th uh, it will be one year of the podcast. And I'm doing an episode where it's like, this is what I've learned in one year. And that is my number one thing. Do not, do not. Like, analytics are good because it does help you kind of see certain things, but you cannot assess value based off what you see whenever you look at your stuff. 
because mm. it can go so much deeper than that. But uh, let's move to the next question because I can stay there all day. <laughs> I can stay there all day. Um, so, you know, I know you. And when I was in <clears throat> when I was in a role, my last role, I was kind of transitioned before I transitioned out of working in player development and getting on this side and helping people uh, in that realm. I started to see, you know, podcasting for players. I think this is right when NIL began and you began pushing initiatives for podcasting with players. I know you had opportunity to go to West Virginia, I believe, and do some work with them. You know, if there's people listening to this, I mean, I got player development professionals, coaches, ADs, people in the NFL. I found that out today. Why well, I found that out today. Let's go. That's what's up. Um, but, um, you know, when, when you think about that, right at college, it's the NIL, but at the, at the professional level, it's, continue that branding, right? Because a podcast can easily outlast your playing career, unless you're Tom Brady. I don't know if anybody's podcast for 20 plus years and it can be done. Uh, can you talk a little bit about podcasts for players? Cause there's somebody listening to this. that's like, man, you know what we've been, uh, my players have been talking about podcasts. I mean, Clemson, you, you posted it this week. Clemson has a facility where their players can walk in and podcast. I believe Miami is building a building where there's a podcast room. So this thing is, 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 is growing. And if you could just talk about your, um, your initiatives with podcasting with, for players and you know, um, how you do that work. Yeah, most definitely. So I put out the word, um, I, it might've, I'm, I'm not even sure when I, when I actually put out the word, but I put out a call on Twitter and I was like, comment below. If you have any students that are interested in learning how to podcast, I said, drop students names. I put them through an application process. We probably had about 20, probably like 15 students fill out the application and tell me why. And then I brought them into a program to where I was walking with them. It was probably about, we shot for four weeks, but it ended up being eight weeks. And I had different people um, from there, a couple of student athletes from the University of Texas and from some other schools. And I was just going to teach them how to start podcasting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then from mm -hmm. doing that, then I said, well, now I want to be able to show schools and universities how we can how we can do this uh, to really help their players, not even for the NIL specific use. It was for them to learn and understand that in order to successfully transition from college to career, you're going to need soft skills. You're going to need to be able to give a solid elevator pitch. You're going to need to be able to have analytical skills, work under a deadline, time crunches, like all of these things all of these things that podcasting teaches you. So then I got with my guy, uh, Brandon Floyd, shout out to him. I, I met him when I spoke uh, for the University of Arkansas and he was the one who uh, helped me with this initiative. He was like, well, Jonathan, well, think about this and wh wh what about, you know, putting these objectives here and different things like that. And then uh, Tangela Cheatham uh, mm -hmm. introduced me to Dr. Paige Diggs, who was at, at West Virginia at the time, um, who's now at uh, San Diego State. And then we were able to uh, pr create this program called Post Podcasting for Players, specifically for the West Virginia uh, fifth quarter program, right? That's why even in the branding, you see it's like that goldish in that blue um, for them. But the, the whole purpose of the program was to help these student athletes share their stories while going through this process, they're walking away with tangible tools and they're walking away with the ability to now share their story, speak eloquently, edit a podcast, like all of these things that, to your point, after they're done playing or even while they're playing, they can continue to build their brand, right? Because it's one thing to build your brand for four years and that's great. And it looks good on Instagram and with with the blue check and with followers. But it's another thing to have a platform to where once you leave from that institution, mm -hmm. you still have people that you can contact and you still have people that are tapping into your show every Wednesday or Thursday or whenever it might be. So that's why I want to create podcasting for players to help student athletes understand you need to share your message and share your voice. But while going through the process, right, if the league is next for you, great. But now you already have stock in other areas and the podcast or even content creation has helped you elevate and shown you where your other interests lie. I appreciate you sharing that. So 
you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, if you could dive deeper into how you got into this work. Yeah, for sure. I can go, I can go a little bit deeper. So, uh, just like I was sharing before going through the midst of, you know, having, having the podcast, uh, beyond the ball and really starting to push that message out, push that content out. I started to get followed by and connecting with more and more student athletes, just based on some of the guests I would have and based on just some of the topics I would cover. And then I would start to see that there was, I, I was starting to see repeat offenders, if you will. Right. And and these were people reaching out saying, Hey man, I was a student athlete. I don't know what to do now. I feel like my university used me up. I was a student yeah. athlete. Uh, I feel like they got what they wanted, but I didn't get what I wanted. So yeah. after having so many of those conversations, I would start hopping on the phone with these people. And then I was like, well, this is why I want to do this because I want student athletes to be in a position to where when they graduate, even before that, honestly, that they have experiences and they've identified at least three to five interests that they have before walking across the stage, right? Because I was that student athlete. After I graduated, I said, I don't want to see another book. I have my bachelor's in psychology. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to be a counselor. But in real life, like, I didn't understand that I needed a master's degree to right. counsel. And then I also didn't realize how many hours that required of me. And I said, you know what? I don't know if that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm in this work and I'm driven by this work just to make sure that these young men and these young women can take the influence and the platforms that they have now. So they ultimately can leverage it to where they can benefit themselves and their families for the rest of their lives. Nice, nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, sir. All right, so this next question. All right, here we go. So with that, you know, um, you being in work to help ben benefit others in their lives, what services do you provide? Oh, th thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so um, for, for me, uh, what, what, what my services look like is, um, of course, we, we offer the opportunity where we can, we, we can be on campus you know, facilitating workshop sessions, um, facilitating individual team type talks and sessions like that, uh, which I'm actually going to get ready to do uh, coming up in a few weeks. I'm going to get ready to go down to Nickel State, Louisiana. Oh. And we're going to do a men's session. Then we're going to turn around and do a women's session. So um, do, doing sessions like that around mental health, uh, mm -hmm. around positioning them to be a champion for life, right? So cultivate the championship mindset for life. And then uh, we also have the podcasting for players, which ultimately is really showing people how they can get started in their content creation journey. So there's there's that in terms of me speaking, but then there's also the aspect of, of where, where I do consulting as well. Like I'm working with the University of Texas right now and I'm consulting them uh, with their podcast and showing them how we can improve some things, how we can tweak some things. So in a nutshell, that that's really what it looks like for me is the speaking is the consulting. And of course, you know, we, we do some, do some one-to-one -one and virtual um, type opportunities as well, depending on what the institution or the team needs. I nice, appreciate it. I can say, I can literally say from experience, the, the services you provide are, are above and beyond, uh, above and beyond. They have helped me, incredibly like i i went from like oh i gotta do this like to you telling me like hey do this strategically i remember when i had the titles the funniest story of the titles and i'm sitting here and i just put like question one through three question four through six question seven through ten question eleven through thirteen or fourteen and you call me like hey ed jones uh, uh anybody that doesn't know you is not going to click. And this, this title says nothing about player development. And I was just like, Whoa, like that just changed my whole mindset and how I, I went about things. And the, the episode started to get more likes and just even encouraging just, you know, different things. So look, you get his services, what, what, whatever y'all agree to. I mean, he, you want to talk about hitting a home run out the park, out the, like, you know, in San Francisco, they can, you know, you can hit it out the park and then it falls in McCovey Cove. I think it's called McCovey Cove. But that is Jonathan Jones. I know that from experience because, like, this podcast is growing. When I first started, I was reading on a sheet of paper. 
the player development pod is here to blah, blah, blah. And then Jonathan reached out to me. Hey man, you got to get off that sheet of paper. You got, you know, you got a great personality. You got to smile. You can't, you got to let people see it. So once again, it's not, he's not going to give you a service because I've seen this before with people like you, you pay for a service and they just give you literally what you pay for, but there's an in-depth care for the person as he provides a service. So I want to, I want to say that that's a testimonial. I, it is literally, I get it weekly. So I appreciate that. Now, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I mean, no problem. No yeah. problem at all, man. I got hey, look, I, you know, Hey, <laughs> I, hey, I gotta give, I give great reviews. I'm a level five reviewer on Google right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Community. Okay. I don't know what level five is. It may be like 25 levels, but I felt good. I did a review. They said I was level five. So I'm getting there, you know? Nice. So what, uh, well, one question I asked is like, Okay, so you get the services, but a big thing is what does the engagement look like? I know that was something I always asked when I was in the position and we brought people in. What does the engagement look like? So the the, the engagement for me, um, one one thing I love doing is I, I like getting there early, right? So I can mm-hmm. make sure that the whoever the decision maker is that brought me in that their their stress is gone, right? I try <laughs> to get there a day early, so I'm like, hey, I'm in town, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna miss my flight and miss the engagement. Yes. So that, that, you know, that's, that, that's first. But then uh, outside of that, I actually talk to the players, right? I talk mm-hmm. to the individuals in the audience, right? Uh, and this is before I even get up to speak. And I'm like, what, what would make this worth your time? If it was in the morning, I'm like, what do you need to hear from me that right. made this worth you waking up? So, you know, just hearing what they're saying, of course, I've already prepared for the presentation, but now I have the ability to weave in some other aspects based on what the audience has told me, which shows them that I'm going to get some buy-in because I'm talking about what you already said you wanted to hear. Right. Uh, but the other piece is I, I love getting them engaged, right? Getting you, you going to talk to me, right? I'm not talking at you. You're going to talk to me. We're going to have some fun. We're going to laugh, uh, everything like that. And it's not going to be me reading off of slides. No, right. you're going to give me an example in your life. You're going to like, we're going to talk through some things. So ultimately, making sure that the audience walks away better than they came. So based on whatever I agreed with the decision maker, whatever objectives we agreed on, the audience is going to be able to um, implement or share those objectives, right? So making sure that I do all those things. And then after the fact, I'm staying there till every question is answered, till every picture is taken, till you have, and I say it in the engagement, I'm like, Hey, if you have any questions, I don't want you to leave with a burning question on your heart. It's not going to be because I didn't answer it. Cause I waited here till everybody left. So that's typically what engagements look like for me. And, you know, I always like to stay connected with the student athletes after and the decision makers. So, uh, yeah, that's typically what they look like. Appreciate that. I've, I've seen both sides of that. I've seen speakers, that come in and boom, headed to the next school, you know, and I've seen speakers who will come in and like spend time. One speaker we had, he did an incredible job. Um, he memorized names. We were just, I'm just, he was early like you and he wanted to see the facility. So we walked around the facility, start introducing himself to people. Mm-hmm. And then he like called the dude out during the speech, which was like six hours later. And the kid was like, uh, I was like in the back, like, dang, this, he called out all five people that he like, to your point, had a connection with. And to this day, he still mentors them like, like legit. Wow. One of the kids transferred to another university. He went out to the kid's game, the kid's son, when he got to the NFL, he came to camp to see it. Like it's so to, I, I'm, I already know that you're on that level. Cause I think that helps the athletes, right? That's one thing I always tell people all the time. What's the biggest yeah. thing about player development? What's the biggest, how can I help? relationships. Yeah. You see that they got 65 people on staff that are around them, but how many deep really, how many people truly support them? And that's coming from a, Hey, all right, I support him because he's an all American or he's a five-star recruit. Or do you just like support him? Cause he's a human being and he's in your sphere of influence. So I appreciate people like yourself who uh, come to engagements and, and provide that. Uh, so right now, here we go. Mm-hmm. You are passionate about podcasting. It is, it is very um, evident. Um, I think it's, it's, I would say it's very near my passion for player development. You probably got me uh, a couple of years. Um, but 
So this podcasting, right? I'm sitting here. Let's say this is my my mom, right? And she's listening. And she's like, I keep hearing this podcast. My son got a podcast, and or whoever, right? They just I'm jump on because uh-huh. they got they see you know the 2023 G- GQ Man of the Year and the 2024 GQ Man of the Year. Anyway, they just jump on, right? Can you talk about like uh, podcasting? Like why? Why is it so important and in a sense necessary in today's society? Yeah. So. We've grown up in a time where there was like one nightly news, right? Right, Like one local Mm -hmm. nightly news. There was probably like three to five channels if we didn't have cable to where we were watching those things and that's all we could consume. Mm -hmm. That's it, period. But now individuals are starting to realize that just because this person is a famous actor, just because this person is uh, a famous athlete, or entertainer or whoever doesn't mean that their experience is more valid or more credible than mine. Mm. So now everybody has the opportunity just because I believe the the biggest opening for this was really social media, right? Yes. Because we have the opportunity to follow people and we have the opportunity to learn more about them. But podcasting is so special because podcasting is intimate. Just like you said on some of your episodes, right? You shared how you transition from, you know, from this potential opportunity to this opportunity. And it's sharing something in a space that is cathartic, right? So Mm -hmm. it's beneficial from a mental space, but then even further than that, you have the opportunity to intentionally build a one-to-one connection with somebody, Mm -hmm. even though the model is for one to many. I'll say it one more time. So you can build like a, like how me and you are talking Mm one-to-one, right? This is something, this is intimate. This is a conversation between us, right? but then somebody out there relates to a story that you shared or that I shared. And they're like, oh, wow, coach Ed is talking to me. Jonathan is talking to me. So now the more that they begin to consume your content, they're like, oh, wow. I feel like I know coach Ed. I feel like I know Jonathan. So podcasting is so essential because it's allowing you to do what you said, build relationships. Mm -hmm. And when we build relationships, then that adds to the trust factor. And when the trust factor is added, and of course it does, it doesn't always have to lead to this, but when the trust factor is there, that's where people spend their money because after somebody listens to you so much and they hear you talking about player development, talking about player development, and then you're like, I always make sure I take my notes on my sketch pad. Somebody's going to be like, well, well, what kind of sketch pad is it, Coach Ed Jones? Right. And then you can be like, well, you know, I use XYZ sketch pad. And be like, okay, I got to go get that. Right. And, and now people are hearing your experience, hearing your stories, hearing what's worked for you. And now they're going to apply those lessons and those things because they hope to generate a certain level of success that you've accumulated. So podcasting is intimate and it's, It's the only medium, the only medium Mm -hmm. to where you can, you can consume podcasts while doing anything, walk the dog, taking a shower, take, well, you might not, well, yeah, you can't do with a shower, turn it up, but you you, you can't, you can't read a blog in the shower. Like, I mean, come on now, you, you reading, walking a dog, that's going to be very challenging. You're going to be hit by a car. Okay. But, you know, podcasting creates that opportunity for us to educate ourselves and do those things all while, you know, still doing our day to day lives. It's interesting. You said that. So you talked about the personal connection. Right. And this kind of goes back. I I interviewed somebody in season two and um, somebody reached out. That person brought up somebody at a university where somebody was working at. That person went to the person that that person brought up. And then met with that person. They got an opportunity in athletics. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, he's like, I, I, I was like, I helped you get a job through a podcast, you know? And this is at the time when I was looking for one, I was like, Hey, that's awesome. You know? <laughs> and then I met the young man. And when I, when I went to the, I was in the city and we met and it was incredible because like, he literally took everything I was talking about and took it to another level. He's like, I hope you don't mind. I was like, dude, this is brilliant. Like, this is incredible. But now we're connected because of that. And it mm-hmm. was just 
I didn't even know you know, cause you show it like it's, it's either me and you talking to each other or, and you know, and you know, this It's a camera, external camera, you know, or computer camera. And it's just you talking and you just put it out there. And even to your point, I know it's definitely intimate for the people listening, but it means a lot to me when people come and say, I love your podcast or I love this specific episode. Or when you said that, like that, that means a lot. That's pretty cool. Like I, I ain't gonna lie. People who listen to podcasts, you get my ear. So if you say like, let's say somebody comes to my LinkedIn, right. And I got all these, you, you know how it is, man. You got yeah, yeah, yeah. all these students and one student says, Hey, uh, I listened to episode blah, 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 blah. And you said this, I'm not gonna lie to you. That answer is getting answered immediately. Um, and it, mm-hmm. sorry for everybody who's not listening. You should listen, but no, uh, but yeah, that's, it's interesting. You brought that up. Cause I know as a listener, there's people that I buy their books whenever they put out a book, I'm buying it just from listening mm-hmm. and, you get to learn different things or like, it's just interesting. It is, it does take you back. Like, man, this is, I remember that. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Now, and, and, and this, is gonna be the last, this is going to be the last piece on this last piece on this. And then just like Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, there is whatever flavor of podcast that you mm. desire. If you want financial literacy, if you want sports, if you want uh gossip talk radio, it's all there anyway, but well, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I love that because I think athletes bring so much to the plate and they think everybody wants to hear them talk football, but I think a lot of them will be successful. Like if, like I had a few players that loved and like loved anime and I was like, dude, you should like, why don't you talk about it? Like people would like, nope, not to judge, but you're a six foot two, 235 rock up human being and you love anime. I'm pretty sure people would listen in. So people yeah. would love it. People will love it. Awesome. All right. So right now, this is the open mic session. So this is open mic session for you to say whatever you need to say to the listeners. Maybe we didn't cover something that you wanted, but open mic, the mic is yours. And I appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to take this open mic and, and, man, just give you your flowers, man. Because uh, just like what you said before, uh, we, we've been connected for some for some years now, but just seeing the idea on, on paper, because you showed me on paper, but seeing the idea on paper and then see you take it and turn it into a podcast and and now taking the podcast and parlaying that into a conference and seeing you doing the consulting and seeing you do all of the things. Uh, man, I'm, I'm just proud to, to, to be a part of the journey and I'm proud to, to see you uh, really rock it out, man. But for the open mic, man, that's just it for me. I just want to, I want to give you your flowers because you're, you're, you're doing you you you're doing the unthinkable mm-hmm. and the only reason i'm saying that is because you've you've done the work like you've you've done the work you've made you you've made more money than a lot of podcasters <laughs> all because you were you were daring enough to do the work and then you made the ask to follow up so kudos to you ed jones you know you're 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 you're, you're true to your name cuz i see you you know call the audible pivot make the uh, adjustments where needed and then you run the play so kudos to you, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. They got me blushing all on the podcast, man. Let me drink some water to, to, to get it. <laughs> Somebody's cutting onions. Let me make sure it's not one of my kids. No, <laughs> I appreciate that. And, and and seriously, man, I, I like, I appreciate you. Like for me, like I, I was down. I'm not going to lie. And I had moments like, man, do I know what I'm doing? Like, I, I felt like I did a good job and this podcast helped me like, no, I did know what I was doing. Whatever happened, happened. We're not going to spend time on that, but you definitely helped me through a time where, you know, I just needed, I needed something like I got my my mom and daddy say, you got to stay busy. And this kept me busy, but it also benefited a lot of people. And it's, it's helped me see honestly what I will and will not do going back into it. If that opportunity arises. So thank you so much. Now, Praise God. Yes. Yes. Look at God. Uh, now, how can people connect with you? How can people bring you in to their program? For sure. Uh, so just, just like Coach Prime said, I'm not hard to find. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can shoot me an email to um, support at JonathanJonesSpeaks.com or you can go to my website jonathanjonespeaks.com there i have you know where you can you can see different places i've spoken at you can see uh some videos of me but that's where i say just just get started i'd I, I say shoot me an email find me on linkedin um but 
yeah, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. Or you can, you, you can even find my podcast. You can type Let's in go. beyond the ball, right? Beyond the ball with Jonathan Jones, and they'll pop up on all platforms. And then man, just, just shoot, shoot me a message and we, and we, we, we can make it happen. We can make it happen. Let's go. Let's go. Well, appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on Player Development Pod. Once again, people, this is why I love player development. People like Jonathan who come and help you in the role, you listening, uh, help your athletes. So that's that for today. Please go to show notes. Check out the show notes. All the information is there. And check out that this is my action item for you. Look, you. This is my action item. My coach, I put on my coach voice. You check out Beyond the Ball by the end of the day. You got me? All right, y'all. Y'all have a great one. Jonathan, thank you so much. All right, Coach Ed Jones, appreciate you.